At the end of this video, I'm going to tell you about the movie series that has the Guinness World Record for being the longest movie series with the same actor playing the same character. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about the five movie series I think you should check out. But first, here's the flashy new intro. Movie series are a really old phenomenon. In Hollywood, they date back to the silent movie days where Charlie Chaplin played the, pretty much the same character in every movie. In 1939, when Charlie Chaplin and his evil Nazi regime enslaved Europe and tried to take over the world. His lovable tramp became a worldwide phenomenon, aided by the fact that there was no dubbing issue with silent cinema. Magazine series characters were already a thing at the end of the 19th century. Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes started out in the Strand magazine, for instance. By the 1930s, radio serials were popular and quite lucrative as well. And movie series were definitely going to happen. The Hollywood studio system where actors were indentured to a company helped with this. In the 30s and 40s, before the glass teat invaded the living room, audiences used to love movie series. They gave the punters a reliable product, they knew the characters, and probably a lot of the plots too. The first features of cinema double bills filled up with these often cheaply made but entertaining movies. Movie series continue to this day with the multi-character, multi-time period and multiversal mosaic of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the action-packed macho fantasy of the James Bond films and the endless iterations of various horror franchises. So, diving as I do into the history of cinema, here are five unusual movie series you might want to check out. Based somewhat loosely on a novel by Dashiell Hammett, the Thin Man series of six movies between 1934 and 1947 are wry, intelligent and witty comedy whodunits. Nick Charles, played by William Powell, is a wealthy private eye. He's fond of a drink. He's married to Nora, played by Myrna Loy, a socialite, and they live with their charismatic fox terrier dog, Asta. Nick and Nora keep getting involved in murders. The movies rely on three strong things. William Powell's gift for comic acting, Myrna Loy's beauty, charm and ability to hold her own with William Powell in the acting and comedy stakes, and sharp, witty scripts. These movies are funny, entertaining and very rewatchable. The movies are 1934's The Thin Man, After The Thin Man 1936, Another Thin Man in 1939, Shadow of the Thin Man in 1941, The Thin Man Goes Home 1945, and Song of the Thin Man in 1947. You should check these out, they're fun to watch. I love this pan-European Euro spy series. Unlike many 1960s spy movies, these films, based on a popular German magazine series, cater to the female gaze as well as the male by having two hunky protagonists. Joe Walker, a private eye played by Tony Kendall, who was really a Roman ex-model called Luciano Stella, and Tom Rowland, played by stuntman Brad Harris, who was from Idaho. They go on spy adventures across Europe and Asia in these goofy and well-made 1960s adventure flicks. If you throw in a truckload of beautiful European starlets, sadistic and eccentric villains, and some ridiculous super weapons... Yes. ...then you have some bingeable silliness to fill in a rainy day. The Commissar X movies are Kiss Kiss Kill Kill from 1965, Death is Nimble, Death is Quick from 66, So Darling, So Deadly from 66, Death Trip from 1967, Three Blue Panthers, also known as Kill Panther Kill from 1968, Three Golden Serpents, also known as The Island of Lost Girls from 1969, and FBI Operation Pakistan from 1971. If you're in the mood for some mindless action with some beautiful locations, you should check these ones out. Fantomas is hard to describe in some ways. He's an international anarchist whose origins, his real appearance and his motives are pretty much unknown. He was created by Marcel Alain and Pierre Silvestre in 1911 for a series of stories. They ended up between them writing 43 volumes about this mysterious and deadly criminal. 
leaving aside the numerous individual movies in the 30s, 40s and 50s and a TV series starring Helmut Berger, you can choose your Fantomas series of movies because there were two series. If you like silent films, you can go to the silent movies by Louis Fiat, which are out on DVD by Kino Lorba. They were Fantomas from 1913, Juve contre Fantomas, 1913, Les Morts qui tuent from 1913, Fantomas contre Fantomas in 1914, and La Faux Majestat in 1914 as well. Or if you're more of a Eurospy fan, you can watch the three 1960s Fantomas movies directed by André Hunebel and starring the incomparable Jean Marais along with comic actor Louis de Funes. They were Fantomas in 1964, Fantomas is Missing 1965 and Fantomas Against Scotland Yard in 1966. I'm a big fan of the 1960s Fantomas. I love the mask and I really like Jean Marais as an actor. I love Gert and Daisy. These World War II era comic characters played by real life sisters Elsie and Doris Waters are in every way extraordinary. The Waters sisters started out as singers and musicians on the stage in the 1930s before creating their iconic wartime characters. Gert and Daisy are two Cockney housewives living through the Blitz and World War II rationing. They appeared in three movies in the 1940s and a TV series in the late 1950s. The movies are Gert and Daisy's Weekend in 1942, Gert and Daisy Clean Up in the same year, and It's in the Bag from 1944. You might have to hunt around for these ones. Gert and Daisy's Weekend did have a British DVD release, so you might find it on eBay. Why are Gert and Daisy so good? They satirise wartime austerity from a female point of view. Their targets were rationing the privilege of the upper classes, mean-spirited neighbourhood gossips, and people who whined about hard times. Unashamedly optimistic and good-natured, Gert and Daisy were role models during the war. Elsie and Doris Waters have been called the most influential social satirists of that period in England. Gert and Daisy's Weekend in particular looks at the plight of children sent to the countryside from the cities during the Blitz. Gert and Daisy demonstrate the toughness and resilience of ordinary people during extraordinary times, and I love them. In cinema, different cultures give us characters who are influenced by or reacting against the social mores of that particular culture. None more so than Brazilian Jose Moyica Marin's singular creation, Coffin Joe, an amoral atheistic undertaker who's antagonistic to the Catholic beliefs of his native country. Coffin Joe doesn't believe in the supernatural in spite of his encounters with ghosts, hell and the devil himself. Coffin Joe was on a quest to find the perfect woman with whom he could sire a son, thereby perpetuating his bloodline. The only people Coffin Joe liked are children, whom he saw as pure before adults inflict damaging ideologies upon them. He appeared in three primary movies as the character. At Midnight I'll Take Your Soul in 1964, This Night I'll Possess Your Corpse in 1967, and Embodiment of Evil in 2008. He also hosted a horror story anthology series on TV, Beyond Much Beyond the Beyond, between 1967 and 1988. He also did an interview show as well. Coffin Joe has been called Brazil's bogeyman. Coffin Joe also appeared in some other films in slightly different ways. There was a 1968 anthology film, The Strange World of Coffin Joe, where he was the host. In the 1970 film, Awakening of the Beast, people who take LSD hallucinate Coffin Joe. Strangest of all is The Bloody Exorcism of Coffin Joe, a meta-film about Marin's the actor being haunted by the supernatural version of Coffin Joe. In an adult film called The Strange Hostel of Naked Pleasures, there's a character strongly implied to be Coffin Joe operating as the proprietor of an ambiguously haunted hostel. In Hallucinations of a Deranged Mind, a scientist asks Marin to help because he's haunted by dreams in which Coffin Joe abducts his wife. Now, Coffin Joe's definitely acquired taste, but if you're into horror, try it out and see if it's your jam. Here are the honourable mentions. The English Doctor series in the 1950s, starring amongst other people Dirk Bogart. Of course, you have the Carry On movies, the English comedies that went from the 1950s to the 1980s, ending with the sad and sorry Carry On Emmanuel. There was the Falcon series in the 1940s, which was a carry-on from the Saint series, starring George Sanders, 
which were low-budget second-feature detective shows in the 1940s. There's the very saccharine and ordinary Andy Hardy series starring Mickey Rooney in the 40s as well. And in Hong Kong, there were many, many movies starring a possibly mythical martial artist called Fong Sai Yok. Fong Sai Yok has been going since the 1950s with various iterations up to this very day. Now, just to finish off, what's the longest running series with the same actor playing the same character in movie history? That series is Japan's Torasan series, also known as Otoko wa Surayo, or It's Tough Being a Man. Starring a former nightclub comedian and actor, Atsumi Kiyoshi, there were 50 Torasan movies between 1969 and 1997. There was also a reprise movie done in 2019. I'm not going to say more about Torasan, except that I'm going to be talking about his movies next week in my next video. If you enjoyed this video, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. And I'll be back next week with the story of Torasan. See you then.